Hello. Let's talk about ADHD. ADHD is categorized by two things. We have hyperfocus and we'll say unfocus. Hyperfocus is where you are completely focused on this thing and your full attention is there and no one can pry you from it and you are so good at getting this task done. If you feel like you've got ADHD, you'll know that you have periods where you can completely focus on the thing that you actually want to do. But you also have the devil part of this, which is the unfocus. That's where, let's say, there's something that you don't want to do. And no matter who's telling you that you need to focus on this, whether it's your, your mother, it's your father, it's the uh, fat teachers that we all had in primary school and high school, they're all telling you, hey, focus on this thing. Focus on this. Why can't you just focus? Why can't you just focus? But your mind is just there thinking about whatever it is that you actually care about. Or really, your mind is there still focusing on the thing that you care about. It's just that you can't focus on something that you don't give a shit about, basically. So this is the, the common symptoms of someone who's got ADHD. Hyperfocus, unfocus, distorted focus, whatever like the, the real term is. This is also what we can call extreme on and off. On and off, that's what like a lot of ADHD feels like. It's like, okay, you're so on, this is the thing, this is the thing, and then it's not, it's not. Okay, I'm off, I'm off this. Another one can be all or nothing. So people who have either got ADHD or at least have got similar symptoms will, will really relate to this all or nothing. So you're like, okay, this is the greatest thing ever. This is the thing that we need to be focused on. This is the thing I'm going to dedicate my life to. Oh no, okay, I don't really give a shit anymore. Oh, you know, this thing, I don't really care. No, no, this thing, this thing. And you keep changing what the thing is every few months or so or every few weeks. And you're like, oh, this is the thing. Oh, this is the thing. Oh, this is the thing. And 20, 30 years of this, you can either be wildly successful because the hyper focus, if you put that into a business and you stay focused on it all this time, you can make a lot of money. So I make about $100,000 uh, per month, so over like a million per year because I was able to just hyper focus on this business. Or on the other hand, if you were never really able to hyper-focus on anything too productive, and maybe if you were trapped in hyper-focusing on, uh, on video games, and on TV shows, whatever, well then, well, it's not really uh, unfocused, but uh, yeah, basically then you could be struggling. So I want to help you to become this version of like an ADHD kind of guy. And, and full discol disclosure... I've never had like a diagnosis or anything, so I might not. I might, might be just one of those cringe motherfuckers who just like says they've got ADHD, but they don't actually. But I've got like the symptoms of it at least. So in this video, the question is, or the the conversation is, I think I know how it's caused, and I'm just going to tell you from my experience. So here's a uh, let's make it brown so it's more <laughs> more accurate. I hate this this shit, by the way. It's like how how do you find brown on this? Like what? There you go. What's my skin skin tone? I'm like a nice, like poopy brown, like a high fiber poopy brown. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so here's little baby me, and here are my parents. There you go. This is my mom. That's my dad. So they're going through their own shit in life. We've got financial stress. Uh, they moved to a new country. They moved to England. That's the English flag. <laughs> They're from Pakistan, right? We're, like I was born in Pakistan as well, right? So they moved there. We're experiencing racism. A lot of racism, actually. Smiles start going upside down. Dad starts uh, drinking a little bit. They're having arguments. My mom misses her family back in Pakistan. My dad... Uh, he was higher status and he had more money when we used to live in Pakistan. He had like more people who respected him, which obviously for a man means a lot. And so when we moved to the UK, he lost a lot of that and he started to, you know, get sad and whatever because of that. And unfortunately, they obviously their behavior then towards me and my siblings became 
one ideal. So they deeply love us still to this day. Like my parents love me a lot and they did through this time as well. So sometimes they'd look over to me and they would take us in the car to parks. Here's a tree. To parks and like uh, to the beach and, you know, here's the, the water. To the beach as a family, we'd all go together. Why was I not smiling through those trips? My parents have taken me and my brother and sister to the beach, to the park. Why would my dad look over at me and say like, like, oh, why don't you smile? Because 20 minutes before we left, they would attack me for something, you know, that I, I did, which I, I never was quite certain of, like, what standards I had to stay to. So, you know, they've, they've slapped us or threatened us. Okay, so we've got, like, angry, angry mom and dad right now. Angry, like, like really, really angry, right? Blah, 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 really, really angry. Here's me, okay, thinking, okay, okay, oh, right, okay, angry, angry. They don't love me, they don't love me, they don't love me. Ten minutes later, ah, oh, uh, happy family in a in a park, right? Here's the tree. <laughs> Here's, okay, happy, happy, oh, shit, that looks like a penis. Happy, what the, how do you draw a tree, man? <laughs> An arrow. <laughs> happy family in a park. Extreme on extreme off on off on off they hate they hate me they hate me they hate me they, they you know i'm unsafe i'm unsafe wait, wait wait they do love me actually I, I can tell you a a memory actually um so for a long time at a certain age i was convinced that my parents didn't love me and that they hated me and i was planning to like to leave you know like as a as a child like to run away from the home and i think i was like seven or eight years old and I was convinced my parents didn't love me. And it got to Halloween. And the mask that I wanted to wear, you know, for trick-or-treating, like the Halloween mask, like the oh, the big scary one, whatever. It was in the, the loft of the house. Which required kind of like a ladder to get up to. And when my mom asked me which mask I wanted to wear, and I said that one. She went into the little storage thing, got the ladder, and went up to go and try and find it. And it was such a simple thing, but I remember being stood there, little baby, with like one of the saddest realizations that you could have as a child, thinking like, oh yeah, she, she, she does love me, because if she'd go and do this, then obviously she does, right? I don't think it, like a child shouldn't have that realization, like, oh, my parents do love me. Like, and it was, it was like a surprise, basically. And so you can imagine that, you know, I was in this like happy, loving, safe mode for maybe minutes or hours up until the next phase of like my mom or my father's like pain, stress would be put onto me. And so I go from this, yeah, they do, they do, they do to like, a, let's say another threat or another attack or whatever to me being sad again and thinking, oh no, they don't, they don't, they don't. So this constant on, off, on, off, I think that's what leads to the, the sort of hyper focus on distracted focus or like unfocus or let's say, let's call it distracted focus uh, off. It's basically just like if your parents were, were kind of fickle and they were on with you, like loving you and being really nice to you, but then also randomly they'd start screaming and threatening I think then our brain develops through these early years to the point that our brain now has like a, has a brain operates in the same way where we're on, we're focused, we're really happy, we're stable. Okay, this is the thing. Yeah, this is awesome. And then suddenly it just goes off. Like anyone who who relates to having ADHD will tell you like a shit. Like it's not with just with our focus or with our behavior. It's with your emotions as well. Like you can literally be feeling great and then randomly feel bad. And, and likewise, you can be having like, you know, a really bad day, really bad mood and a random thought or a random like song or feeling just happens and you're like feeling amazing. You're confident as fuck, right? And it's like, like guys who have got this will, will know this. It's like some days you'll just feel like a loser, low status, whatever. 
and you'll get one glimpse of like your physique or one, you know, you'll hear like one of your workout songs and you'll instantly start feeling like way more confidence. What I've seen in like quite stable people who didn't really have this kind of household, they don't have that. They're, they're like, they do have different emotions through the day, but it's not that extreme. So I was just in, in uh, Bali with a really beautiful girl and we, we were, look, we were sat on the couch and we're talking about stuff, right? And we're talking about getting pets. And one sad thing that I say, so she's like over here, right? One sad thing that I said was, oh, you know what? I, I wish I had a dog when I was younger because if I did, I think it would have been like a really nice source of like comfort and stability and unconditional love for like younger me. And, you know, it made me really sad, right? And I was we were just talking about that. And then she said, like, yeah, I really miss my dog. And I said, oh, did you have a dog? Like, you know, when did it die? And she looked pretty sad. And she went, like, two weeks ago, I, I told you. She didn't think it was that big of a deal that I forgot. You know, she ended up, like, moving on with the conversation. She went on her phone looking at pictures of her cat, kind of, because she missed her cat and stuff, right? I went into the bathroom, and I needed a shit anyway, but I went into there, so I'm like, I'm having a shit. <laughs> and it's good that we've already got the brown, like, right, I'm having a shit, there's, <laughs> there's the toilet. But I'm, I'm like, yeah, this is me. So I'm having a shit, but I'm on my phone as well. And I start, like, journaling on my phone. Like, <laughs> I was like, that's f so fucked up that, you know, she had told me something. And I kind of remember her telling me but she must have told me in like one of those like distracted focus periods. And I thought like how sad that is that like, it, it, you know, it's an important thing. Like someone telling you like a family member, a pet of theirs died and you were barely even present for that because I was probably hyper focused like elsewhere. And I started to feel really sad about that. And this is what gets interesting, right? So then the next part, I come out, I've, I've finished the poo-poo. So I come out and I've thought whilst I'm in there, I need to fix this problem. And we had spoke before about this like retreat and, you know, the things you can do to like fix ADHD, which maybe I'll, I'll talk about in like a different video. But I went out and sat on the couch and, you know, she's looking at phone and uh, her phone uh, and she's, she shows me pictures of her little cat that she was just looking at. And I kind of look a little bit to be polite, but then I stop and I just kind of say like, I need to like fix this ADHD thing. And I think I'm going to go and like really take this seriously. And I'm going to consider like, I don't know, therapies and go to the retreat. Like, the, you know, there's like ADHD, not retreats for ADHD, but you know, like, like psychotherapists and whatever treatments, you know, there's just stuff you can like look into, right? And this is where it got interesting because she kind of like understood a little bit. And then she went, oh, look at this one as well. Like another picture of a cat. And I started to go inward into my own mind. And I literally like, you know, created a bit of distance between us. And I think I maybe had journaled a little bit more to the side. And I started to write like, oh, you know what? I don't even think we're that compatible because like I'm journaling this, right? Because I, I really wish like my dream woman was more understanding and like she wasn't that supportive and like, you know, I'm telling her something deep and then she just like showed me another picture of her cat. And I'm saying this all in my mind while she's sat next to me. And um, I end up just getting the confidence to kind of tell her like, I wish you were kind of more supportive on this. I just told you something serious. And... um this is when, like, I thought I was in the right by thinking all this and by telling her. And bear in mind, she's this is, like, a really, like, healthy girl. Parents seem completely healthy and normal and stuff, not traumatized like like me and everything, right? And then she apologized, and she's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize, like, it was that serious. And, like, I didn't realize that, like, um, basically she said, so she explained it from her perspective. First of all, she apologized and she kind of like validated my feelings and stuff, which was nice. But then she explained it from her perspective. She was like, we were talking about dogs and then about my cats. And then you went into the bathroom and it was just so hard for me to follow along because you came out so serious about ADHD. But like I was still thinking about my cat. 
And that's when I stopped and I was like, fuck me, like, like normal, like healthy people, they don't have this extreme on off where like me and her, we're in a pleasant conversation, something triggers me and I start thinking about ADHD and I literally go like, okay, full mode. Okay. This is how I'm going to set up my life right now. And you know, this is, everyone's going to get used to this. I'm going to go do this retreat and stuff. This is my life. I've got to fix this. I've got to fix this. I've got to do this. Got to do this. Whereas for her, it was like, we spoke about the dog. Then we spoke about the cat. I went to the bathroom. She was still on the cat. When I came back from the bathroom, she wanted to show me pictures of her cat. And I was like, oh yeah, like she was, she's not a bad person for like not instantly getting onto the same frequency as me when I'm saying, yeah, ADHD, you got to fix this, got to fix this. Because like she was more stable. And to be honest, I don't know what the point of this, this particular story was. I just felt like sharing it. But like that, it's just like how someone who potentially has this interacts with someone who doesn't. Since they're a lot more stable than you, they're, they're like slower. Like I went to the bathroom for a little poo-poo and within like five to 10 minutes, it's like I had like a new life plan. And we joke about this now of like, oh yeah, like my mind changes a lot. And like you, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you've seen my mind changes a lot. My content style changes a lot. And I think it's because of this, because with ADHD, you can just go extreme on this, like new, like, you know, a new, like a random thought will pop up into your mind and you can just extreme, go hard, 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 hard. And then w the weirdest thing is literally just minutes later, you can go completely off. And I think that's just because... That's just how our parents potentially treated us. So I could be completely wrong, but this is at least my perspective of why I think it's happening to me, why my brain has this extreme hyper-focus, distracted focus, this on-off, this all or nothing. Maybe it is for you. Maybe you can relate to that. You can let me know in the comments. And I don't want to leave you with no practical advice or action step. But now that you kind of understand, okay, this could be why, the phrase reparenting comes to mind. So if you've looked into books on like trauma and healing, reparenting is a phrase where basically we, I've just completely spelled that wrong, but you get what I mean, reparenting. We realize to heal that a lot of our behavior, thoughts, and feelings are just dictated by our experiences as children. I think most of us understand this. Like as a child, you're so vulnerable that like anything that happens really honestly like shapes you for life up until you kind of change that percept like you know, that thing that happened. And so one thing you can do is reparenting where you almost like go into your own mind and pretend you are your own parents. And you kind of like parent yourself in the way that you wish you were. So maybe the practice, like the actionable step for you is to see yourself as like your own father who's being really stable in the way that he teaches you things, in the way that he navigates things with you. There isn't this extreme, like threatening, aggressive, violence behavior coupled by like, you know, lots of apology and then the ice cream afterwards and stuff, which is, by the way, also why I think I've got kind of like an eating disorder that I, I binge eat quite a lot. Uh, through my life not so much as many times these days it still happens but i also think this is why because when my um when my parents used to act like this shortly afterwards we used to go to like mcdonald's and stuff because they'd probably feel guilty and then they'll buy us like food and, and stuff and so i have like this weird association in my mind where if i'm hurt or feeling scared or stressed or whatever my mind obsesses over bad food so it's just very interesting how much your uh, your actions, beliefs, feelings, and everything can be dictated as an adult just by what we went through as a child. So now that you understand, maybe you can just take a moment to think, okay, well, if this is why and it makes sense to me, then what can I do to kind of lower how much this happens? Let you Just answer that yourself instead of me giving you advice. Maybe you'll come up with something unique that will work for you even better. Hope you like this sort of advanced self-improvement lecture content style. Let me know in the comments if you like it and I can do more like this up until I change the, the content style again. Oh, Jeffrey had done this again, bro. Oh, I'm live streaming, guys. Come on. <laughs> Let's go shout out women. <laughs> Take care.